Now, let's dive more into C. So the very first thing I want to introduce you guys is about declaration. So declaration means I want to reserve some spot in a memory grid. So in the code, I reserved six blocks for our variable called cats. So the reason why it took six is because short data type contains two bytes. And we initially said we want three. So three times two equals six bytes. So we're taking six blocks. So when we declare, we are telling the computer, we just want to reserve those spots and we don't want to assign any, anything yet. So when we print out the second index of our array variable cats, it can print out some weird numbers. In our case, it printed out 5072. Initialization is about assigning numbers into our array. So this time, I specifically assigned 974 into these blocks. And once I print out the second index, it printed out 7. So the second index is the, set, is the middle two boxes of our array. So it included a row of zeros, and the last three are ones. What if we only initialize a couple of them. So in our case, I have cats equal to 3 and 4. What this will do is the first index will be 3, the second index will be 4. And after that, because we didn't initialize anything, it will, it will always be 0. So if we print out the second index, it will print out 4. So this is also an initialization. Even if we didn't put any numbers in there, okay, what this will do is the entire array will be zeros. So I also printed out the second index and it printed out zero. Now I want to show you some debugging tools that you can use while you're programming. One of them is called GDB. And GDB is widely available on Windows and Unix machines. And today I'm going to show you how to use GDB on your Linux machine. So GDB only accepts commands. What I mean by that is you cannot use your mouse for this. You can only use your arrow keys and your keyboard to navigate through. Let's dive right into this. On this screen, I have a very simple C program that will add numbers from 1 to 5 and it will print out the result. The result should be 15. However, I made the program in a way that it will print out something else. So we'll find out what the problem is later. So in order to run GDB, what we have to do is we need to run this normally with all the flags that we know, which is dash wall, dash std, and dash o. And we're going to add additional flag, which is dash g. If we put dash g in there, it will make our program able to run GDB. So hit enter. So it didn't give us anything, but that's normal. That's good. So then we type GDB and we put the output file name, which is final. So this long introduction right here, it just introduces the GDB program and it also tells us the version of the GDB that we're using. So let's try running this. And once we run this, it gave us the output, which is just 10. I said earlier that this should give us the output of 15. So now we have to dive right into this. So in order to do this, we have to add some pauses into our program. Right now, if we run this program again, it's just going to exit normally, and it will just print out 10. So in order to add pauses, we need to add these things called breakpoints. So to add breakpoint, we need to do break. After that, we need to type in the line number. So for us, we're going to stop at line number 12. So we put 12 in there and hit enter. So it says we added a breakpoint number one on line number 12. Another way we could do this is we can just shorten 
the breakpoint. So instead of typing break, we can just type B and then the line number. But you could do that for yourselves. So now let's try to run this program. So to run it, we type run, except for this time, I'm not going to do run. I'm just going to type letter R because that's the short term to use it. So I enter. Now it says we stopped at the first breakpoint on line number 12, sum equals sum plus start. So which matches what we have right here. Now, if we want to print out the variables, we could do print sum and it will tell us that print sum, so sum is equal to zero at, at the very first iteration of our breakpoint. Well, we could also print out start as well. So if we do print start, it tells us that start is equal to one. Um, we could also print the other variables. So we can also print the counter as well. So instead of typing, instead of typing print, I can just type P, then I type counter. And counter is equal to one. So in order to go to the next line, all we have to do is type next. But for simplicity's sake, I'll just type N. So N, then we went to the next line, which is start plus plus. We can hit the next again, and we went to counter, and we can hit next again, then we went to the while loop. Then we can hit next again, and then we reached the second uh, iteration of our breakpoint. So, sure, we can continuously type N, However, if we want to skip to the next breakpoint, what we can do instead is we can type continue. But we can also just type C in there. So we hit enter. Then we entered to our third iteration of our breakpoint. So let's type uh, the, the variables that we know of. So let's type, um, instead of typing print start, print counter, print sum, we can t print out all of them simply by doing info and locals. If we enter, it will tell us that start is equal to three, counter is equal to three, and sum is equal to three. Now, let's continue on. Let's continue on by typing C, and we went to our breakpoint for the fourth time. So this is supposed to happen. Now let's type C again. Now it exited the program and it printed out the result 10. But the thing is, this program, we're supposed to run the loop five times. But we've only ran it four times because the break only appeared four times. So that's where our problem is. We didn't run this enough. So to fix this, we'll go to our, our original program and make some changes. So I'm just going to type 6 in there. And then we need to rerun GDB. So in order to rerun, we need to quit. So we need to exit out of GDB. And then we need to compile the program all over again. So in order to exit, we simply type quit. Or you can type Q. So we type Q. Then we rerun the program. And then we type enter. Then we type GDB and the name of the output file. Okay, so we've seen this before. Now let's try running it. If I type run, it gave us 15. So this is how you use GDB into your program. 